Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Netflix. Today on Variant, I count down the top five best lady superheroes. Ooh la la. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than hipsters like to use hashtag no filter on their Instagram pictures. I'm your host, Eris Quiznos. Today I'm going to be counting down my top five favorite heroines from the comic world. That's right, fellas. Today's episode is all about the ladies. So like in any countdown, I'm going to start with my number five favorite, counting all the way down to the queen bee hero of them all. At least who I think is the best, as there can never really be a definitive answer with these sort of things. But that's besides the point. Top five favorite lady heroes. Go. at number five is Black Widow. She recently has pretty much become a household name due to the Avengers movie this past summer, but she's been around since the 60s. 1964 to be exact, to me, has always been one of the coolest girl characters out. I mean, she's a freaking Russian spy, so she already has that going for her, because spies are just freaking awesome no matter who you are. It's kind of like a ninja just equals cool. Second, she's Russian, and Russian accents are always BA. I'm sure most of you remember the Russian from Armageddon. Wanna know why? Because he was Russian and awesome. Anyway, Black Widow was first introduced as a villain for Iron Man in Tales of Suspense 52. Then later, due to her love for Hawkeye, she overcame Russian brainwashing and joined the Avengers. What's a cool little piece of info is she did join the Avengers, but not as a full-time member because she didn't respect the Avengers' oath of not killing. So then she later joined S.H.I.E.L.D. to be their double agent and operative against the KGB during a mission for S.H.I.E.L.D., which is why in the Avengers movie she is both a member of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers. See what I did there? I just brought that back around full circle. In conclusion, Black Widow is basically a female James Bond, so where can you go wrong? At number four is Black Canary. Now, I'm not gonna lie, a big reason why I love her character is because of her portrayal in the Justice League Unlimited cartoons. I really liked her interaction with Green Arrow and even Wildcat in that series. And oddly enough, I thought she was attractive in that show. Is that weird? It's definitely weird. Either way, it's true. The original Black Canary, Dinah Drake, first appeared in 1947 in Flash Comics issue 86. She was also a member of the Justice Society of America, which was the first ever superhero team in comic books. She's also the only Golden Age and Silver Age hero to be a member of both Justice Society of America and Justice League of America. However, her daughter Dinah Laurel Lance later took over the Black Canary mantle and is the modern age and my favorite Black Canary. Black Canary has an ability called the Canary Cry. She can send out an ultrasonic sound from her mouth by screaming. And Ayo. The sound is strong enough to destroy solid objects and decapitate her opponents, meaning she would be one heck of a front woman for a hardcore band. She is also a master martial artist, especially in the form of judo. She's actually considered one of the seven best fighters in the DC universe. So, pretty much what I'm saying is you do not want to piss her off. Coming in at number three is Batgirl, and of course I'm talking about the Barbara Gordon Batgirl. Now, I'm a huge Batman fan, so it only makes sense that Batgirl is one of my favorite heroes. I like her way more than Batwoman, not saying I don't like Batwoman, I'm just saying I love me some Batgirl. I've just always been quite fond of her character. And I still remember watching her on the 60s Adam West Batman TV series and being like, Hey girl, I holla. What's your number, girlfriend? Something a little interesting about Barbara Gordon Batgirl is she wasn't the first Batgirl. The first Batgirl was Betty Kane and she was the sidekick of the original Batwoman. Later, however, she was replaced by Barbara Gordon in 1967 in Detective Comics issue 359. The creation came about as a joint project between DC Comics editor Julius Swartz and the producers of the 1960s Batman TV series in order to boost ratings for the third season of Batman. I'm loving the fact that Barbara Gordon has returned to her role as Batgirl after being paralyzed for years due to the Joker shooting her in the spine. I've always loved her in the past comics. I actually am really enjoying her New 52 title a lot, which only solidifies why I love her character so much. Plus, she was awesome in Batman the Animated Series. Number two on my list is actually a tie between Jean Grey and Rogue, both of which I'm sure most of you hear this when saying their names. Was I right? I was probably right. Anyway, I love both of these characters since I was just a wee little one reading their Marvel Masterworks volumes in Barnes & Nobles while my parents would read in the cafe area. They just always stood out to me the way they interacted with the rest of the X-Men and their powers alone were awesome. Jean Grey first appeared in 1963 in X-Men issue 1. She was known under the code name Marvel Girl. Jean was also the first and initially the only female member of the X-Men. She began as a character whose sole power was telekinesis. Then years later, writers decided to give her telepathy which was explained by being a suppressibility that remained 
remained dormant. During the 80s, Jean went through another change when she became the vessel of the Cosmic Phoenix Force, making her arguably one of the strongest entities in the entire Marvel Universe. Which even if you haven't read the Dark Phoenix Saga, you might have watched it as the storyline was adapted in the 90s X-Men cartoon series. As for Rogue, she made her first appearance in Avengers Annual 10 in 1981, and made her first X-Men appearance in Uncanny X-Men issue 158. And she probably has one of the coolest powers in comics. Rogue possesses the mutant ability to absorb the psyche and abilities of other people through skin contact. Rogue can absorb the memories, knowledge, talents, personality, and physical abilities, whether superhuman or not of the person she touches, as well as occasionally duplicating in herself physical characteristics of her victims. So, like I said, pretty much one of the coolest powers any hero has. So yes, Jean Grey and Rogue, two of the most BA ladies in comic books. Sitting pretty at number one on my list of female loveliness is Wonder Woman. Now, you're probably like, Wonder Woman, she's the obvious choice, and you wouldn't be completely wrong, but I have very good reasoning why she's number one on my list which are as follows. She's pretty much the female equivalent of Superman, and she's one third of what's known as the Trinity of the DC Universe and or the Justice League. The Trinity comprises of Batman, Superman, and herself. So she's pretty much Superman with uh, boobs and one of the top dogs in the DC Universe. Wonder Woman is also an Amazon princess from Paradise Island, and her daddy is Zeus, meaning she's probably related to Kevin Sorbo. Wonder Woman's history, however, has changed somewhat over the course of time, and she is one of the longest continually published comic book characters. After the 2011 New 52 relaunch, Zeus is now her biological father through Hippolyte. I think that's how you pronounce her name, I'm not sure. However, Zeus and Hippolyte engaged in combat, and in the end, they ended up making love. Thus, Diana was conceived. This encounter was hidden from Diana, who was raised to believe that she was born out of clay in order to protect Diana from Hera, Zeus's wife. For those of you who have seen the 90s Hercules TV show, you know she can be a real B. Currently, Wonder Woman and Superman have a thing for each other in the comics, which I'm liking a lot, especially how they're known as the power couple. But yes, those are just some of the many reasons why Wonder Woman is my favorite lady of the comic book world. Netflix streams TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix member, you can instantly watch TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV with Xbox 360, PS3, or Nintendo Wii console, plus Apple devices, Kindle, and Nook. And you can get a free 30-day trial membership by going to netflix.com forward slash variant and signing up now and watch some movies and TV and all that fun stuff. First up, we have Nightwing issue 17. Dick Grayson's life lies in ruins in the wake of the events surrounding death of the family. Here we have Green Lantern issue 17. An epic destiny-fueled adventure begins here with part one of Wrath of the First Lantern. And the threat that first led to the formation of the Guardians of the Universe returns and he set his sights on the biggest and brightest of the corpse. Next up is Justice League issue 17. The epic full-length conclusion of Throne of Atlantis hits as Aquaman and the League make a sinister discovery that changes both the outcome of the war and the future of the Justice League. Now we have Saga Issue 10. This comic has the makings of being a classic series, so basically what I'm saying is, check the series out. Next we have Superior Spider-Man Issue 4. This series has actually been pretty good, so if you're thinking about getting it, get it. Now we have Nova Issue 1. The Human Rocket returns. You followed him through Avengers vs X-Men, and now the mystery of the all-new Nova is revealed in his new ongoing title. And finally, we have Justice League of America Issue 1. The march towards the Trinity War begins here with part one of the world's most dangerous. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Catwoman, Katana, Vibe, Hawkman, Stargirl, they aren't the world's greatest superheroes, but they're the most dangerous. But why does a team like the JLA need to exist? What is their ultimate goal? Well, find out by reading their new ongoing. Once again, my fellow comic companions, that brings today's episode to a close. Before I go though, I did want to give some honorable mentions that didn't make my list. The characters like Emma Frost, Storm, Zatanna, Huntress, Invisible Woman, She-Hulk, Power Girl, Supergirl, and Miss Marvel. There are just tons of awesome girl superheroes out there. So post some of your favorites below. I'm also going to put a poll up on our variant Facebook page for you guys to vote on who you think is the best woman here. Also, be sure to follow me at Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ares underscore Quinones. And I'll see you next week when I do my own casting of the upcoming Justice League movie. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>